This one's going to be a quick conversion. So here's a, I think it's a console table with a drawer in it, broken drawer. It's uh, 10 bucks or something from uh, Facebook groups. So I'm going to strip it down, see what it's made of and uh, convert it to something useful. I think I've decided on an approach, so what I'm looking at doing is chopping these down here to lose the nasty bit. This is solid oak, about 17 inches high, so it makes like a nice little side table for a sofa. I was hoping to just trim an edge off here to lose these bevels, but I think this is actually being nailed together and filled because I can see the fill marks. I don't want to ruin my saw blade, so I'll I'll leave that and then the last thing I may chop this bottom bit off here but I'll find out I'll give it a look uh, I think that's going to be it and then I might chop this in half and just have kind of a uh, top part and then a little shelf halfway down as well just for books or something so to the table saw do some cutting see what happens it just occurred to me I should probably not sing when I'm working on these types of things. So the legs are chopped. I just gave this one a little sand to see if I can work out how it is joined and it is nails. You can kind of see them there and there. So I don't want to run those through the table because the saw will hit them. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll get these all sanded down because um, the wood looks nice and then but before I do that I'm going to chop this down uh, get it squared up and see if I'm going to do a single top or a little parcel shelf as well need to do a little bit of layout so I know exactly where these are going to go so before I do that I'm going to give the wood a quick sand just so it's smooth and I can get it marked out because I need to chop the bottom one so it's going to sit inside these legs um, I'm still not happy with these bevels, so I'm thinking how I can get rid of those without actually damaging my saw blade. Uh, thoughts and prayers. So sanding actually gives you a good time to think. Nope. I was hoping that the nails were either this side and that side, and then I could just kind of cut the edge off where the nails weren't, but unfortunately it's nailed on all sides. Back to the sanding. I don't like it. So I'm having a ponder. What I'm thinking now is I might try and split the legs open, glue two pieces together, so I essentially get a, an inch by an inch leg that I can work with, uh, and then have a, just a support along here made from this, rather than having a shelf. So I'm going to grab a chisel and a hammer and see if I can get this wood apart. I've marked where all the nails are, so I'd, I know the problems I'm working with. The other option I've got is I can actually um, hammer in the nails further so the saw blade clears them, but then there's still going to be these kind of huge, great big monoliths of a leg. Let's see what happens. Have they been glued well? Were the nails there to just hold it and there's no glue? Ah, so that is looking promising. It appears there's very little glue in there. And it's all nail. Well, this particular one anyway. Now the question is, how do I join it? So what I was thinking was essentially that, so I get a, uh, a good sized table leg which goes in the corner. Two of them are still together because I only need the wood from two to make the legs that I need. And then what I'm gonna do, these nails are well and truly in there, so I'm gonna run them through the saw, just missing the nail to the width of the thinnest piece, which has no nails. And then I will kind of just clean them up glue them together and they'll become the legs. So 
So now for the gluing. So whether this is still true or not, I don't know, but I was always told to wet the wood before you put the glue on because it helps it seep in and create a stronger bond. And the other thing I kind of tend to do is uh, spread it out with a little spatula as well, rather than my finger. But you always end up with filthy fingers when you're gluing, so I won't worry about it. Alexa, set an alarm for 60 minutes. While I'm waiting for these to dry, essentially what I'm gonna do is, legs in each corner, obviously, and they're about an inch square, just shy two inches maybe. So they'll sit about there, and then I'm gonna rip the spare piece I have into slats, which will run probably the same width as the legs, whatever I work out those to be, like depth ways along. And then they'll have little um, uh, tenants, that's the word I'm looking for, tenants cut in them. And then I will route out some slots in these so they fit together. And then I'm hoping there's enough left of this that I can do a thin shelf in the middle as well. So I've done some measuring. Uh, essentially it's about 20 inches this way and 7 inches this way for the um, supports that I need that are going to have the tenants that go into the mortises that will route into the legs. So what I'm going to do now is cut three bits, which should give me just enough left to put a table on the inside lower down, or a shelf rather. These should be almost dry now, so I'll undo those in a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to remeasure where my legs are actually supposed to be. So let's see if these actually glued together. So they've been sitting there for an hour, which should be enough time for me to cut them. So that's kind of roughly how it looks, I guess, upside down. So now I'll clean up the legs, see how big they actually are, and um, go from there. I've trimmed the width, so they're exactly an inch and a half wide, so now I'm just gonna run, uh, I don't know what it is, like a millimeter off the edge, um, which will clean these sides up, and then they'll be exactly an inch and a half all the way around. So I've just realized I've got a uh, camera angle I need to work on. Um, but for now, you'll have to listen to my words instead. So what I'm gonna do here is cut a mortise, a half inch wide mortise um, using the table saw. And it's actually half an inch deep as well. So the idea is you run it over three sides, which will give me the line. And then I essentially just keep going over and chop out the bits that I don't need. So we'll see how it goes. There we go. Hopefully, exactly a half inch mortise. Slightly too small. The first one, I uh, didn't use a scrap bit of wood, so it's slightly thinner than it should be, but I can shim it, I'm not concerned. The mistake I did do is that all of the mortises are the saw, weight, saw blade width too deep. So I'm gonna keep them like that and re just re-measure where the legs are gonna go. Um, I forgot to take into account the width of the saw blade when I was doing a half inch. Time for almost the last step. So what I need to do is put some mortises in here. So I'm gonna use a half inch router bit and essentially probably go down half an inch and then just go in with the router, get to the line and then stop. Do that for up two on each one and then uh, hopefully they will just slot straight in. And then I'll run a rabbit along the edge of the inside of these and use the original clips to screw it down to the base and then decide if I'm gonna put the shelf in or not. So I've just done a test mortise. Can you see that on the camera yet? Yeah. So normally you do this with a router, but because I've got a mill, I'm just using that. It's uh, easier for me. So essentially I clamp the wood in 
Um, I've got marked it to exactly an inch. There you go. So you can see here my plan changed just slightly. So I've, um, what I'm going to end up doing is chopping off up to the pencil line there of the um, mortise so that it slots in there nicely without, because I was worried that the, the bit would get too close to the bottom and you'd actually see it. So that will slot in there like that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is just trim off the tenants so that the uh, they fit snugly because when I started going too far through, I was worried I'd lose some support. You can see here, kind of this one, I think it's about the right depth. Yeah. And then uh, you're kind of starting to interfere on the other side. So I didn't want to structurally break it. So I'll just trim up the uh, tenants on these and slide it together, see how it looks. Now let's see if my measurements all worked out. So you can kind of see here, I don't know if I can get this up to the camera, so you can see it. So that's how it slots in there. And then once it's glued, it's uh, a very strong joint. So once that's glued and clamped, I think I'll be happy. So, but before I do that, what I'm gonna do is run some rabbits down the inside. Let me find the parts. I always keep the parts when I'm building so that if I ever need to go back to them, they're there waiting for me. So this little clip here, essentially there's a rabbit that will run down here and it will slot in the rabbit and just screw to the table and hold it down. And then it gives it room for the wood to expand and move. Time for the standing part. <sighs> Top tip, always get all your clamps out and position, make sure they're gonna fit before you start gluing, because the glue does go off pretty quickly, so you wanna get it clamped as quickly as you can. And then the other thing I'm doing here is because this is the finished wood, I'm going to have some scrap wood that are actually clamped to so that I don't damage the, the finished piece. Alexa, set an alarm for one hour. All the confidence of the gluing, none of the sticking. So essentially the uh, the glue, the, either there wasn't enough or my measurements are off because it didn't glue at all. Um, you can kind of see the residue of the glue in there. Um, so I'm gonna clean it up and then probably go to my favorite fixer, some uh, epoxy resin. I worked out the mistake I'd made. So it turns out I was so paranoid about not getting the glue on the cross members that I only really covered the back of the slots in glues and if I pop this in there you'll notice there's a gap so the glue never actually touched so what I really need to do is kind of cover the whole tenant with glue and slide it in and then clean it up so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to this time do the sides let those set solid and then do the uh, the ends and put it on Alexi just gave me a beep, so let me find out if the glue worked this time. So what I'm doing is making sure the mortises fit exactly flush with the top of the legs. The one that's too small there. Ah, oh, that's where it's. Oh. oh. It's super easy to forget, but you've only just glued a piece of wood. So when I was just tapping it in with a rubber mallet, it dislodged the the glue from the first pieces I've done. So I've essentially reclamped it. The glue's kind of still slightly soft. So a couple of hours it should set and then I can um, bolt it onto the top and call it a project finished. It's stuck together. 
So I'm pleased with that. I gave it, I was away on business, so I gave it a couple of days to dry and it's rock solid now. So what I'm going to do now is just pour some epoxy into these holes just to give it a little bit more strength. And then you can see the tenon that I cut slightly thinner kind of got pushed to one side and glued to give it the, the strength it needed. So it's, it's kind of slightly off, but you'd never notice. So I'm pleased with that. I'll get the epoxy in, put the top on and then call it a finished job. Here's the finished end table. So... It's all done for a $10 source project find on, um, I think it's Facebook groups. Kind of happy with it. It's uh, trimmed up, just a little bit of cleaning. You can see here there's uh, some marks from the saw blade I just have to sand off. And uh, I think there's one there, there's another one on the other side here. But other than that, it's a good project. Now to make it useful.